Were you surprised by, you know, we talked about this in the first segment, how, you know, the economy is number one, um, that healthcare, healthcare is as far down the list as it was, even though, as Robbie just mentioned, a lot of the concerns in healthcare have to do with cost. Well, I'll, I'll say two things about that, Tom. First is, so, you know, I asked Sean Trinity about this, but, but I, I'd like to ask you, Robbie. So you look at this and it looks like the economy overwhelms everything. Um, even, even in these, the, the, the voter priorities, Spencer asked, um, you could pick up to two things. Um, you know, out of pocket expenses, cost of healthcare insurance premiums were the first two, but you could pick two. But five of the top seven were about cost. Um, saving, you know, sa protecting Obamacare, excuse me, the American uh, Affordable Care Act, uh, 16%. Addressing the opioid crisis, 9%. 100,000 Americans die from opioid. You'd think that would be higher. It sounds like people are just obsessed with this economy and really focused and really worried. Uh, that's, that's the first part. The second part is, if you add some of these issues, and, and Spencer, you might have thoughts about it. I'd like your thoughts about that, Robbie, but let me, it's a two-part question, so I'll ask the second part to you, Spencer. You, if you add climate change, which can be a healthcare issue, if people have uh, you know, conditions, you know, health, asthmatic or heart conditions. You add abortion, which is a health care issue. You add the health insu uh, insurance premium cost. You have about 25 percent, Spencer, in your poll that could be health care, you know, or health care or health care adjacent issues. So this strikes me that the economy is overwhelming it, but health care really is on people's minds as well. Um, so you go first, Robbie. Uh, yeah, did that I, cost thing that jump out at you the way it did me? It did, and I, but I think what the poll shows is um, what do we mean by cost? Because I think a lot gets lumped into that conversation. We certainly feel that from the pharmaceutical industry where so much of the political conversation is, what's the list price of a medicine? And what voters say they care about is what are they paying to access that medicine? You know, we, we don't control the price that, that voters pay, that uh, the patient pays when they go to the pharmacy counter. Insurance companies, these big pharmacy benefit middlemen that they hire to set up the, the, their benefits, they decide what medicines are covered, what patients have to pay, what hoops they have to jump through. Um, and what's been frustrating about a lot of the policy uh, making process lately is there's been less focus on the real challenges that voters are experiencing um, and what they say they care about. It. Instead, it's a focus on well, what's the overall price of the medicine. And what we're seeing is actually there's a lot of rebates and discounts that happen through a competitive marketplace, but patients aren't seeing the full benefit of that. And I think this shows that they're, they're looking for solutions that actually address their real pain points. Did the 9% for opioid, did that surprise you? I thought that would be higher. What did you? You know, it's, it's a great point because it comes up a lot. Um, you know, I think it is a, it is a real pain point. I mean, I've, you go to any sort of community and you ask people if they know of anybody who's been, whose lives have been impacted by the opioid epidemic, you'll get hands raised everywhere you go. Uh, so I, I think it is, uh, consistently on the list, but I think what this shows that for many people right now, they are struggling to be able to to go get the medicine that they need tomorrow or that their kids need or that their parents need. And I think that's animating a lot of their focus, not that the other is not important.